Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and welcome to the OpenTunes News. As of the release of OpenTunes 1.2, I've received a number of complaints. As such, I have needed to have a rather lengthy disclaimer. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and narrate the entire disclaimer, otherwise, every single OpenTunes News video will have the first five minutes covering a five minute long disclaimer, which would be boring. But I do expect people to read this, and if they wind up leaving me messages, Messages and such like that, expecting me to respond any way than the disclaimer states, then that's your fault if you didn't read it. I'm sorry. Okay, so the first story of the day is titled Style Sheet Fixes. And mainly what this issue addresses is tabs that were missing their bottom accent line. Some icons seem to have been reprocessed at some point, causing some to be moved from their pixel grid or resized. They should be sharp again now. It also removes icons that became depreciated, adds a hover effect to checkbox text for all style sheets. It also changes the window close button icon color so it's easier to see on light. Shrunk width of the console tool buttons and style added for function curve editor for light similar to Blender. So I've continued reading through this a little bit and it seems like there's a lot of comments about getting things aligned a little bit better and I'm not really quite sure what that's all about but generally it seems like this is discussing a graphical improvement to the graph for the function editor and I think that's great any improvement to that graph is a welcome addition in fact you know we could add more tools to this graph I don't find this intuitive at all uh, there are some days where everything just comes together and everything looks perfect and it seems like I know exactly what I'm doing with this graph. And then other days, it's just like pulling teeth. The entire computer program just refuses to cooperate. And I get weird results that just seem completely counterintuitive. Results that seem like they're impossible to receive. So, I don't know. Something needs to be done about this graph so that we have more tools, more visuals that make more sense. Maybe being able to just isolate specific things on it so that we could just specifically only look at the information that we need to look at at one given time versus another. I don't know. Th things in general need to be revamped with this in my opinion. And, uh, you know, any graphical improvement to it is at least a, a step closer to maybe getting that. I don't know. Anyways. The next story is titled Mega Project, and it's made by Agni, and pretty much everything made by Agni is awesome. And he states the following. Hello everyone, I created a useful package for OpenTunes, which will be useful for both animation and for editing or motion graphics. This pack is inspired by the pack that's linked right here. It's called Big Pack of Elements. And so here I go ahead and I click on that link, Big Pack of Elements. Let's just see if we can glean what it's about. Looks like there's a little play button right here that you can click on. You can watch a little video that explains what this Big Pack overview is and how Agni's issue here is related. Looks like it comes with backgrounds, gradients, charisma backgrounds, titles, charisma titles, badges, icons for business, icons for about ecology, icons about video games, icons about the medical industry, and icons about the internet. Also, presets in 2D, 3D, and presets that are in text. Used for little animations, things like that. Also, there are a lot of animations for hands. Also, there's animations for shape lines, shape particles, shape sparks, and then a bunch of shaped mixed animations. Generally, this is a pretty interesting little package here. This big pack that this issue is based on. To continue reading what Agni has to say, I would also like to make a tool that would make it easier to work with the pack, as it is done here. I myself am not a programmer, and if there is anyone willing to help with this, then I will be happy according to the idea of the RT. There is already a similar system. It should be made a separate window and slightly modified. How is this done in the link I attached? The pack is now being supplemented, but much has already been done. For example, the first section with 
transitions is filled. It included about 45 transitions. If there is anyone willing to help with this pack, then I will be very lucky. Here is an approximate list of sections. First are transitions with Agni's little package here. Transitions, simple transitions, charisma transitions, and animated transitions. And then elements, and then titles, then fonts that are animated, backgrounds, background lines, 2D effects, shot, fire, water, flash, and then characters, animated, and then icons. So let's go ahead and scroll down just ever so slightly, and we can go ahead and see... There is a big freaking download button. So if you guys want some, just, you know, some supplemented, for at least right now, just a little bit of what he's talking about. Some good transitions, and I've seen some good transitions coming from this already. I, I can already vouch for this. This thing is cool. Go ahead and click on this download button. There's a link in the video description below. There's a link to every single one of my stories inside of my OpenTunes news videos. So just click on the link down below if you'd like to download this and, you know, scroll down and go ahead and take a gander. And for the next story of the day, we have the schematic navigation enhancement. It's made by Men on John. This pull request improves the navigation of the schematic viewer as follows. First, it adds three new buttons. Selection, default and normal. Zoom and hand for panning around the schematic. And honestly, I think this is a great idea. The idea that you just pan around and zoom in and such like that with just the keyboard is kind of silly to me. There's no reason for that. No reason for it to be that complicated. And number two, what this thing does is it handles touch gesture. One finger pans, two fingers pinching zooms in and out, one finger double tapping will fit to window. So I think this is really cool. This is a really good improvement. And for the next story of the day, we have unstable panel size. Now I've mentioned this story before in the past and I'll just allow you guys to kind of look at the gif and kind of just digest what the main problem is here. Uh, why this is an issue and such. While I go ahead and leave my own commentary, this story I've already covered before and it's really important that things like this get addressed. And the reason why I say that is because it builds an immediate relationship with the user, with the person using the software. And when somebody is using this pr software for the very first time and they see unstable panel size, whether it happens to be with the general interface or whether or not it's this other GIF that happens to exist on the same page, uh, that deals with effects instead of the effects schematic and the windows that come up in order to control them, scrolling horizontally is a terrible experience. New users, when they experience things like this, this is what they think. Hmm. You know what? Something tells me that this program crashes a lot. It immediately makes a negative relationship, specifically, with the person using the program. And it doesn't matter if OpenTunes crashes more often or less often than it used to, or in comparison to other software. As long as the program has behavior like this, where windows are resized or just naturally sized, just some obnoxious way where it requires you to scroll horizontally or it requires you to just keep resizing your level strip and your palette, it's extremely annoying. And, I mean, it doesn't matter how stable OpenTunes is. If, if OpenTunes never crashed a single time, it doesn't matter. Something like this immediately makes a relationship with the end user. And it's not a very good relationship. It immediately puts into the end user's mind, this program will crash a lot. And it doesn't matter if the program does or doesn't. It's an idea that is immediately imprinted in the end user's mind. I guarantee it. Everyone thinks it. Everyone knows I'm right with this statement. And I'm not trying to be rude. It's just that's just the way it is. Now, I don't know what efforts are being done in order to resolve this problem or not. Uh, but I did leave a comment. I said, does anyone know if anyone is working on this one? And then JP Turcotte, pretty soon afterwards, he went ahead and said, well, is this issue, is this still an issue? 
And then artist teacher responds, this is definitely still an issue. Then open anim quickly responded. When you have a defined workspace for a room, it will be modified at the next opening of open tunes. If closing is done from this room, open tunes does not take into account the arrangement of the room. But if you close open tunes from another room, for example, the browser, your room will remain unchanged. There's no possibility to have this behavior from any room in order to have rooms that allow for the latest arrangement. So that last paragraph to me doesn't really make much sense to me, but uh, it seems like OpenAnim is analyzing when it is that unstable panel sizes occur the most when it deals with an entire room's calibration. This is something that definitely needs to be dealt with, at least from my my perspective, my opinion. I don't know what efforts are being put in order to getting this fixed, but is anyone working on this? Has anyone stepped up to the plate for this? I don't know. I don't know. So, Darren T actually found a predictable crash that can be reproduced quite easily. The name of the story is Predictable Crash While Drawing and Pressing a Key. While sketching with my tablet, I tend to keep one hand on the keyboard, so I'll press B for the brush tool, and then sketch, and then press E for the eraser, and then erase, and then B, etc, etc. Unfortunately, if I go too quickly, sometimes my stroke is still being completed when I press E, and then OpenTunes crashes every single time. This gets really frustrating. I know I could slow down or try to move more careful, but you can't put that in the manual. And I suspect this is the issue for many reports of some random crashes that I hear about. And I kind of agree with that. Like, this is a showstopper. This is a big showstopper right here. I'm actually amazed that I have never run into this particular bug. I mean, I tend to move pretty quickly. I mean, as fast as I possibly can. And, uh, yet I don't have any issue where OpenTunes crashes like this. But it seems like this is a big enough issue. It's a reproducible issue. Other people are experiencing it. So moving on to the next story. Now, typically when I clean up... Uh, animation or something like that. I don't really use the cleanup tools inside of the menus and such like that. I don't, personally. But basically, this story comes from Loris 16148. Issue summary states the following. So the goal is to create a sketch in raster. Then use cleanup settings to convert it to tunes raster. Then I select the level for cleanup. The function carries out fine. One thing that I noticed is when I go to the color palette of that level, the raster palette is still there, mixed with the Tunes raster palette. Obviously, the raster palette does not work on Tunes raster level. So when I tried to use it, the system crashes. The issue is not the crash, but the fact that the raster palette stays on the level after it has been converted to Toon's raster level. So, I'm sure you guys can see the GIF. I'm going to continue letting it be on the screen so you guys can get the full gravity of the situation. Steps to reproduce this bug. Create a raster level, draw something, ensure that your raster level color palette has a few different colors in it. Go to scan and cleanup option up top, select cleanup. Now go back to your drawing, which is now a raster level. Go to color palette, the raster level color palette should still be there. Select one of the raster tools and try to draw. You'll see the program crash. Expected results. Well, I expect the raster palette to disappear once the raster level has been converted to Tunes raster. Actual results. World War III. System information. Open Tunes version 1.2.1, July 28th build. Operating system, Windows 8.1, CPU, i7, memory 7 gigs, DDR3, graphics card, Intel integrated, graphics tablet, Wacom Cintiq. So, this just kind of grabbed my interest. May not be something that I personally use. I've never used the cleanup tools inside of OpenTunes in order to clean up a raster level. I personally find that I like the results when... I happen to be in control over the cleanup. 
But, you know, who knows? I might try this technique sometime down the road. Especially once this issue gets resolved. Uh, I don't want to commit myself to the idea of working on something that's just going to wind up causing the program to crash. So, you know, there's that. And for the last story of the day, we have a story titled, Inputting Numbers in Egg Sheet Cell Can Use the Level in the Following Cells. Now, there's a GIF here. It's not just an image. But this post was posted by Shun Iwasawa. Gotta say, Manon John and Shun Iwasawa, you guys are all over on GitHub. Like, big kudos to you guys. Seriously. You guys do a lot of good work. But anyways, this feature was requested by some Japanese animation studio. When inputting the X sheet by using the rename cell field, which pops up by double clicking on the X sheet cell, typing the number had no effect if there was no occupied cell in the above. I changed its behavior to search the following cells if the above cells are vacant, it will be useful when you would like to input a cell on top of the column. And, you know, I would actually like to say that I've tried this technique out in the past and have noticed that typing in a number hasn't worked. And so to have something to where you could just type in the number of the level directly into the X sheet, that actually might be pretty useful. That way, you know, clicking and dragging may seem like, oh yeah, that sounds like it's the best, you know? Straight from the level strip onto the X sheet. But, you know, even though it's more visual, it does take more time. And there's no reason for it to take that much more time. Like, if you know the numbers of the specific levels that you'd like to put into the X sheet or the timeline. You know, you, why can't you just double click on a cell and then just type it in and press enter and boom, there it is. It's already in there. So that's that. Let's go ahead and take a look at Made with Open Tunes. It's been a while since I last did this, actually. Now, you know, I collected this particular image quite some time ago. This was made by Grimmick Animations. Now, some of you guys might actually recognize this animation. This was submitted to Draw with Jazza, and I believe it was one of the winners that Jazza showcased on his channel. This was made with open tunes. That's awesome. When I found out this was made with open tunes, I was just like, well, holy cow, this, this was. I mean, I recall looking at a, a GIF of this, like, right as Jazza was posting it, I'm thinking, wow, that looks pretty freaking snazzy. This was made with open tunes. Holy cow, I had no idea. That is so freaking awesome. Anyways, a uh, link, I believe, to Grimmick Animations' Twitter handle there. You know, his username is at Grimmick Animations there. If you guys want to take a look and follow him, feel free to do so. Like, this is high-quality animation, and if he gets some recognition off of this... That is well deserved. You know, he's already gotten a little bit of recognition already from Draw with Jazza, so, you know, freaking awesome. So, now, there's another animation I'd like to show you guys, and this one actually comes from Facebook, from a guy called Alex Shahinian. Forgive me if I pronounced your name improperly, I hope I pronounced it correctly, but generally, this guy, he actually said I could use any of his videos on Facebook, but uh, this is the one that grabbed my attention, so this is the one that I'm going to share with you. Now, what I find interesting about this animation specifically is the use of the 3D camera. Really good use of the 3D camera. Just gotta say that. There is no real sound effects inside of the, the cartoon, but, you know, it doesn't need that or anything like that. I mean, I'm just really satisfied with how everything just looks here. I mean, it looks like the sort of animation that you would expect from either Adventure Time or maybe Rick and Morty or something like that. This guy's well on his way towards a professional career. And if you guys would like to take a look at his Facebook profile, where I've gone ahead and linked in the video description below, feel free to look there in the video description below. Once again, every single one of my stories and every single thing that needs to get credit gets credit inside of the video description below. Feel free to take a look there. And, well, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. If you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell. And if you guys would like to take a look at any more content made by me, feel free to click on anything that you're seeing appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated.